I've been a trucker for varying companies for 10 years. Three years ago, I was working for a warehouse company in Kansas doing shipments. I usually drove a semi, which is what I was behind the wheel of on February 2nd. It was a cold Monday, so the week was just starting and a lot of loads needed to be shipped, so I was trying to bang it all out quickly. I started driving at 3 p.m. and intended on getting to the destination that same night. I didn't want to have to pull off on the side of the road somewhere to sleep. I did around 5 above the speed limit after 12, which is fast for a semi. I was starting to feel very tired, but the destination was less than an hour away, and I figured I could do it. My eyes were getting dry, and it was starting to become a chore just to keep them wide open. I splashed some water on my hand and then rubbed it on my face. It helped a little bit in waking me up. My truck was the only vehicle on this road at this hour, so besides my headlights, the road was completely dark. I remember reaching to take a sip of my water and almost spitting it out when I saw a figure approaching fast up in the distance. I hit the brakes hard, and as the truck slowed down close to a halt, I could better distinguish the features of this person almost standing in the middle of the road. He seemed to be wearing all black, with some kind of black scarf wrapped around his neck, and he had an unnaturally long neck. I know it's a weird thing to pick up on, but it was almost freaky looking. His face itself, however, was a complete blur. I couldn't make out any features. As my truck slowed down and got closer to this mysterious man, I was about to roll down the window to ask if he needed a ride, but he just turned to his left and darted into the woods. I didn't take an extra second to stop and think about it, I just pressed on the gas pedal again and moved on. Regardless of how freaky it was, I was in a rush. In fact, it wasn't even until about 20 seconds after that my heart really started racing from taking in how strange it really was. Maybe five minutes later, I was able to get over it. But just like that, something else happened. As I was back to my cruising speed, I saw something run across the street in front of me. At first, it looked like a big animal, but as I got closer and it crossed into the woods, I realized it looked like another person. I didn't even tap on the brakes this time, I just kept going. I kept zooming down the road, maybe even stepping on the gas a little more just because I was starting to get freaked out and wanted to get there faster. Another few minutes went by with nothing happening. However, I was getting increasingly tired, and at times I was even swerving into the other lane a little bit. Forty minutes or so left in the drive, and I didn't know if I could make it anymore. I started looking around for good places to pull over and park for the night. There was eventually a little opening on the side of the road made of gravel. I guess it was meant to be just a little parking rest stop kind of thing. I pulled the semi into it, parked it, and leaned back and rested my eyes. I fell asleep for not even an hour just to wake up out of nowhere to the darkness. I still don't know what woke me up, but as I looked outside through the windshield, something in my gut was telling me to turn on the headlights, and so I flicked the knob and lights lit up the surrounding area in front of my truck. There was something in front of the truck though, a man. That same man with the black scarf I'd seen earlier standing on the side of the road. Now I could see his face much clearer. He had a very wide smile, and his eyes were open as wide as possible, and he looked right at me through the windshield. I turned the truck on and pulled it out of that little clearing as fast as possible. I didn't know what to think. How could he have walked ten miles from where I had seen him last? I didn't stop again that night until I made it to my destination. From there, I fell asleep in the parking lot and woke up early the next morning. Now, the only logical explanation I could think of is that my mind was playing tricks on me, because I had been seeing strange things all night. I've never heard of a hallucination being so vivid and terrifying though, and that's the part that still really confuses and scares me. Before getting an office job in the city, I was a UPS driver for two years. It was good money and I enjoyed it for the most part. It had its moments though, it was 2010, I had been out of college for two years. I was working 11 to 7 on a Thursday. It was the dead of winter, so it was dark by like 5 o'clock. I wasn't exactly living in Palm Springs either, I was living in a small town in North Carolina. I don't want to call it ghetto or slummy, but it wasn't a very nice area at all. I did deliveries in that same town very often. The housing situation in this town was weird. Some blocks would have rows of houses and trailer homes spaced far away from each other, while other blocks were just completely desolate. 
This made for less deliveries altogether because the houses were so spaced out and far from each other that it took longer than, say, a regular suburban or urban community. Deliveries were always marked on the map so that I could take a more strategic route instead of just driving all over the place. After hours and hours of deliveries, all over a span of at least three different small towns, I started heading down one of those streets I'd mentioned just now. Spaced out trailer homes and small houses on one side, forest on the other side. It's a little past 6pm and my shift is winding down with not too many deliveries left. There was one house on this block and the package was to be signed for, meaning I couldn't just leave it on the stoop. I pulled up in front of the house, went to the back of the truck and pulled out one of the biggest and heaviest boxes of the day. There were some kind of small metal pieces bumping around in the box, lots of them. I couldn't even try to take a guess at what could be inside. My job was just to lug the thing to the front door of the trailer home, and that's just what I did. There was no doorbell in this home, so I had to knock. There were no lights on in there though, and I didn't see a car out front, so I was hoping somebody was home. I knocked a few more times, then I saw the curtains to one of the windows move, and footsteps come to the door. Then there was a long pause, a suspicious and unnecessarily long pause before the door finally cracked open. Some older woman poked her head out all paranoid-like, and when I said she had a package to sign, she opened the door fully. She seemed fidgety as I asked her to sign the device. She did so. It was a sloppy signature too. She told me I'd need to help her carry the box into her room. I figured that would be the case. The moment I stepped into the trailer home, I got a huge whiff of some kind of stench. You know how every home has a distinct smell, whether it be good or bad. Well, this home smelled awful. I don't know what it was. She was leading me to a back section behind the tiny living room space. She took me to a narrow hallway where I struggled to carry the box, and then brought me to a door. She opened the door and told me to maneuver the box into the closet in the back of the room. I asked her to flick on the light. She said the light didn't work. It was next to pitch black in there, with the only source of light being the lamp from the living room seeping down the hall into this room. I could see just the slightest amount to navigate the box inside of the room. As I got close to the closet, I saw someone standing in the corner of the closet. I knew for certain it was a person because of the shape of the outline, and there was movement. There was no logical explanation to this. This person was clearly hiding from me, waiting. I left the box where it was and walked past the woman and said have a nice day. She started to scream at me to come back and help her, then she went as far as to call me a piece of shit. I didn't know what this woman and whoever was in that closet were planning on doing, and I didn't want to stick around to find out. I went on with my shift and went home that night, and thus began my job hunt for a newer, better job. I've been a truck driver since I was 25, and I've done a lot of night drives and of course had my fair share of odd experiences. I did deliveries for a number of different types of companies. Often I'd have to drive across state to make shipments to the receiving companies or stores. One day I had to drive literally from one side of California to the other to deliver a trailer full of wooden furniture items. Much of the drive was through open desert roads. It was going to be many hours, and I already had a late start to the day so I knew a majority of my drive would be in the dark. Given the nature of these desert roads at night, how straight they are and how little traffic there is, it meant I could push the truck a little faster than I would on other roads. This meant that when I saw the flashing rear lights of a car in the horizon, I had to hit the brakes a little extra hard to bring the truck to a stop when I finally pulled up behind the car. It was an old Chevy Impala parked on the side of the road in the desert dirt. It had its hazards on. I got out of my truck because of course I had to be a good Samaritan and check if they needed help. I walked over to the car and tapped on the window, only to get no kind of response. I bent down a little to look into the car through the tinted window. There didn't seem to be anyone sitting inside. I did the same thing for all three other seats and could confirm there wasn't anyone in the car. So I looked out into the cool dark desert that the road ran through though I couldn't see any further than maybe 20 yards in front of me. I was feeling especially helpful this night for some reason, so I went back to my truck and got a flashlight from the toolbox that sat underneath the passenger seat. It was a heavy-duty tactical flashlight that was so bright it would hurt your eyes to look directly at it. 
As soon as I turned it on, it revealed what appeared to be an abandoned gas station on the side of the road. Apparently I hadn't noticed it before. I guess the reason I didn't realize it before was because the whole fill up or parking area was basically dirt. There wasn't any concrete. There were also only two gas pumps. Behind them was a small building, probably an old quick stop store at one point. It would make the most sense that whoever's car was over there would be in that building. I went to the front door, which was permanently jammed open, and the flashlight lit up a decent portion of the room inside. It was what I thought, a big convenience store you'd find at many gas stations, or at least it used to be. It was no wonder it didn't last on a road like this, though. I called out to let anybody know of my presence, and that I was there to help. There was the slightest bit of echo in the room, which gave me chills for some reason. Then I heard something, probably a shoe, scrape against the floor on the opposite side of the room, behind a few shelves that were probably once filled with snack items and drinks. I called out once again, offering my help if it was needed. Then I heard a deep, heavy whisper saying, Get out. I understood what was said immediately, but I didn't understand why whoever said it would say that. I was also hearing heavy breathing in one corner of the room. It was enough to make me get the hell out of there in a hurry. On my walk back to my truck, this is what I heard. And there had to be at least five seconds of confusion. I didn't know if what I was hearing was real or not, if that even makes sense. I ran to my truck and called 911 because to be honest, I was too scared to go back in that building. They asked for an exact location and I couldn't tell them. All I could say was that I was by an abandoned gas station on some road in the desert. They asked me to stay on the line so I could describe my location better. But suddenly, the car in front of me turned on and started speeding down the desert road. I didn't even notice him get into his car. It was so dark and I was so distracted by the phone call. I ran back into the building to see if anybody was still in there, while of course keeping 911 on the line. I went to the back section where I'd heard the voice and breathing and I was mortified to see a fresh pool of blood on the floor. I could only imagine what had happened. I explained into the phone that I believed I'd just stumbled into a crime scene. Eventually, they were able to send a bunch of state troopers to the scene. They asked me for any information I could give, license plate number, what the suspect looked like, what I thought happened. All I said was it was a black Chevy Impala, early 2000s, and I heard a man tell me to get out before hearing a woman screaming as I left the building. There was no body left behind, but I had a few ideas of what might have happened. I'm sure the state police took some blood samples and whatnot, but I wasn't able to be of much more assistance. Shamefully, I did not have a dash cam at that point to get the license plate number, but literally the next week, I installed the dash cam into my assigned truck. This was just one of those once-in-a-lifetime experiences that will always haunt me.